Well, oh, look at this. Look at this, folks. Top two against bottom set, Zio against Garrett. Top two against bottom set, king six versus pocket fives. This could be a double up here for Zio if Garrett plays this fast. And here comes the raise. Here comes the raise. There's the call. So check raise to 1800 and a call. 4,900 turns a four. That brings in seven, eight. 5,000. And I think now Zio is probably just going to go into call mode with seven, eight coming in here. Well, he's going to move it in. He's going to go all in. And wow, that's. How much money does he want? I have no idea what I want to do. Yikes. Hey everybody, this is Barton Hansen from CrushLivePoker.com. I want to take a look here and break down this incredible hand that was played on Friday between Garrett Edelstein and Zio, two pros that play in this big game on Friday night. It's 100-200 with a 200 ante, and I had the pleasure of actually commentating this particular hand when it happened. Let's get right into it here. One of the things I wanna say like right off the bat that I think makes this interesting is because they're playing with an ante and because Zio used only about two and a half X sizing, Garrett was getting really an incredible price in the big blind. He was getting over four to one, which is why we actually see him call with king six off, which is a little bit light. I think king six suited is a slam dunk call, but you know, some people are like, why did he call with king six off? He's getting just an insane price, and that's exactly why he did call. Is that okay? You put your chip inside? Well, oh, look at this. Look at this, folks. Top two against bottom set, Zio against Garrett. So once I see this flop, you know, this night sort of goes in ebbs and flows. Sometimes it's a little bit slow, and then all of a sudden you'll see like a matchup like this. And I look immediately down, I'm like, wow, Zio's 33,000. It's bottom set versus top two. If Garrett plays this fast, you know, this might really, really end right here. So I was really, really excited. Top two against bottom set, king six versus pocket fives. This could be a double up here for Zio if Garrett plays this fast. Just like that, we could probably see our biggest pot of the night if things go the right way. And here comes the raise. Here comes the raise. Now, for Zio, he may play this somewhat sort of in a balanced approach where he'd be calling with most other hands. So he might just call here. Now, there's a couple things going on here. Number one, I think Garrett probably takes this hand and raises it almost all the time. He has an aggressive image. There's a lot of draws out there that he could be doing this with sort of in a late position open against his defense in the big blind. So it, it doesn't really surprise me that he makes it 1800 here. What's more interesting here though for, for Zio is that he's probably gonna try to take like this spot and play a little bit balanced and call with almost anything here that he's gonna continue with. I'm not exactly sure if he has many bet, three bets, meaning re-raise a check raise here in this spot. So I fully expected him to call here just with bottom set, which is what ends up happening here. Then, of course, we gamble on whether we see clean turns. There's the call. So check raise to 1,800 and a call. 4,900 turns a four. That brings in seven, eight. So that's not the cleanest turn card. 5,000. And I think now Zio is probably just going to go into call mode with seven, eight coming in here. Now, Garrett uses this overbet sizing, something that we see from him quite a bit. But if you want to become better at poker and specifically no limit with your hand reading, it's all about going back to really to pre-flop. Garrett, and we can see this by the fact that he calls with king six off, he has so many hands here. And I think evidence of the fact that he calls with king six off means that he has seven, eight offsuit as well. And I do think that seven, eight is a hand that he very well might check raise. It has very little showdown value in a spot like this. Zio might only continue with a pair if he gets check raised and he might fold out a lot of different hands. Also, once in a while, if he had a hand like 7-3 suited with the back door or 7-3 a diamond, something like that. But I think that he has all of those types of hands. Now, what he doesn't have is pocket kings. He might have 6-6, six, six, which of course Zio is losing to. But I would be mainly concerned here with 
seven, eight. And this is really not the best card for him here on the turn. I mean, he really wanted a brick, like a 10, like a jack, like a queen, where he could really, really comfortably pile in. I was fully expecting Zio here just to call because with this stack size, if he starts making a large raise or jamming, he gets obviously all of Garrett's bluffs to fold out and he doesn't sort of gain that bluffing equity that Garrett might put in the third barrel on the river. And of course, he's behind to these hands. He's behind to these straights, which I would say comprise a decent portion of Garrett's check raising range. Well, he's going to move it in. He's going to go all in, and wow, that's... How much money does he want? That is uh, interesting here for Garrett now because there's just... There's no way that Zio is doing this with something like Ace, King, or Aces. Now, I was really surprised. I was really surprised that Zio uh, jammed here. Now, the stack amounts are actually slightly off. We'll get that here in a second. I want to go through like what I would do here in Garrett's spot. I was like, wow, Garrett's in the box here again. Like, is he going to be able to, to get rid of this hand? It's about 30,000 total that Zio shoved for. So Garrett's has to call about 25,000 to win 40,000, which means that he's getting just over one and a half to one. Now, if you know poker, uh, math, and odds, you know that one and a half to one means that you need so about 40% equity, and he's actually getting slightly better than that. He's getting slightly better than uh, one and a half to one. One of the easiest ways that you can actually do this as the graphics will come up one with the uh, correct amounts is, is you just basically put in how much you have to call and add the call amount to the pot so it was thirty thousand, and the pot's right around uh thirty thousand shoves so it's twenty five thousand. the call in the pot's right around forty thousand. so all we have to do is, to do. is take 25 and divide it into 65 and then we get the equity needed so garrett needs 38.5 percent equity which is going to be very, very no important here. here. I mean, obviously, the more you play, the more you sort of know this off the top of your head. Two to one is 33%. One and a half to one is 40%. He knows he needs exactly really in the high 30% in terms of uh, equity. Now, this is how I would look at this if I was Garrett and try to do some of the equity in our head. And I'm going to go to this program called Poker Cruncher, which is not like a some sort of solver. It really is just a glorified uh, calculator. It calculates equity based upon the amount of combinations of cards that are available. But let's just take a look and see if that we can do this in our head. Number one, I think the most important thing to note here is that I would be absolutely shocked if Zio ever makes this play here with aces or ace king. I think we can throw that right out the window. Sometimes this is really hard or it's harder. It's a harder spot to play against more amateur players that might overplay a hand and not realize that jamming over the top with a one pair type of holding like that would be a drastic overplay because that's going to come into the calculation if you ever find like some hands that he might call. Now, what I would be thinking if I'm Garrett here is what am I behind to and what am I possibly ahead of? Well, we have king six. So there are three combinations of sets on a board if you don't hold any of the cards in your hand. So if Garrett didn't have king six, if he had something different, there'd be three combos of kings available, three combos of sixes, three combos of fives. Because Garrett has a king and a six, that actually reduces the combinations of sets of kings that Zio can have down to one of kings and one of sixes. So you've got two combos of kings and sixes, and then there are three combos total of pocket fives. The thing about that is, is that I was actually even a little bit surprised that Zio even jammed here with 5-5. Five, five. So I'm going to give him like three, maybe, of the total five combos that he might even make this play. We might even just give him two, but more on that in a second. But what I'm more concerned about here is specifically 7-8. Seven, 7-8 eight. Seven, eight suited. I know that Zio plays a pretty snug game, but he definitely has all the 7-8 suited combo so there's four combos of seven eight suited and there's another say you know two to three combos of sets and I'll, i'm going to make it even because we might only pick maybe three of the four that zio plays this really fast i think he might slow play seven eight a diamond so you know three combos of seven eight suited and then maybe three combos of sets is about six value hands and then it's, what am I ahead of here in this spot? 
I I do doubt seriously that Zio is overplaying 5-6. That is a hand that we absolutely crush. I don't think that he's going to be jamming 5-6 or any other sort of, I would say, smaller two pair. Now, obviously, that does block some of the sets that Garrett can have. But again, Garrett really has all of the seven eights. And if you look at it uh, in an unsuited, you know, an unpaired hand, there's 16 total combos. So I don't think he's just piling in here with five, six. So really, I, I think the other types of hands maybe might be like really, really big draws, which kind of comprise of seven X of diamonds, like a seven of diamonds, nine, seven of diamonds, something like that, like a queen, seven of diamonds or seven, five of diamonds. And I still think that that's probably unlikely. I think that Zio might call with a lot of those and kind of take his equity. So even though this is kind of a roundabout sort of simple way, I talked about six value combos and maybe three combos of a draw. So we've got two times as many value combos here. Now what I would like to do or what I like to do is sort of average in my head what the equity if I was in Garrett's spot, I would have against Zio's value combos. And I'm talking about pocket kings, pocket sixes, one combo of pocket fives and seven, eight. So I would say it's probably right around 5%. He's drawing dead against pocket kings. He has like maybe 4% against pocket sixes. He's got maybe 8% against the one combo of fives. And then he's got about 8% against the seven, eight suiteds. So it's right around, we'll call it 6% just to, you know, give it an even average. So against Zio's real thick value hands, he's got about 6% equity. Now against Z, against Zio's draws, again in my head, because I know about with about one card to come, Garrett's probably about 70% against those because Zio probably has about 15 outs and they look to be all clean. And a really way easy way to do this is multiply your outs times... Um, on the turn times two, on the on the flop times four. That's a really easy way. So you look at it and you'd be like, Zio has like 30%. So Garrett would have 70% equity against um, those draws. But I talked about how Zio most likely has two times as many value hands as he has draws. So it's a really simple average problem in that particular spot. All you have to do is average six six and 70. And the reason why it's six, six and 70 is because I'm weighting Zio's um, value portion of his range by two. He's got six combos of value versus three combos of draws. So six plus six plus 70 is 82. And then you divide 82 by three and you get the average and 82 divided by three is about 27%. And remember, Garrett needs about 38.5%. So if you were to sort of believe those ranges, you would see that Garrett does not have the equity. Now, if you said, well, Zio has more combos of, of draws than that bar, even if we were to weight value combos equal to draws, right? So now we have a situation where with draws, Garrett's 70%, and then against Zio's made hand range, he's six, he's uh, six percent. So then you would just simply average 70 and six. So 76 divided by two is 38 percent. So it's even very, very close. But I just don't really see Zio having an equal amount of draws here to, to value the reality of it. And I don't think he's overplaying pocket aces or ace king. Now let's take a look at the poker cruncher calculator and see how close I actually am by doing that in my head, giving him that particular range. So I already have the flop up here, as you can see. And what's great about here is I can just click here, double click and give Zio a range of hands. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give him pocket kings and I don't even have to go in here and change the combinations because it's just going to, the, the program knows what is accounted for. There's really only one po combo of pocket kings. And I'm going to also give him sixes. And now I'm going to go in here and give him fives, but I only want to give him one of the three combinations of five. So he's got five of spades, five of diamonds, and there's the five of clubs out on board. So 
right off the bat, any of these fives with the club in, in it aren't going to be counted because the five of clubs is on board, so it doesn't really matter. So these are the combinations that are left. So I'm going to give him one of these. I can X this out if I want to. It doesn't matter. It's going to be the same thing. But I'll give him one of the remaining um, three combos of pocket fives. And then we're going to go in here and I'm going to do seven, eight. But remember what I said? I said maybe he doesn't jam seven, eight of diamonds. And theoretically, that's sort of the right play to sometimes slow play that hand. So I'm going to take that out. And then that gives him the three, seven, eight combos. And then I'm going to give him, like I said, three draw combos, a seven of diamonds. Uh, I'm going to give him nine, seven of diamonds here. And then I'm going to give him like five, seven of diamonds. So this is what I talked through in my head of a range here. And we'll take a look here at what the accurate calculation is. And you can see Garrett's about 26%. And I said he was right around like 27%. So that's pretty close. So he does not have the equity here in this particular spot if this is what you know, Zio's ranges. Now, against somebody else, if you were to think that they might go with a hand like aces, now there's six combos of aces here. Let's say that we give him two of the combos of aces here. It's going to change things a lot, two of the six combos. You can see, see that Garrett starts to approach what he needs for equity, and maybe like we give him one of the ace kings, and I'm just going to make sure that it's not I can't use the king of uh, I can't use the king of hearts. So I'm going to give him ace of clubs. This one here, ace of clubs, spade, and see how that changes things. So I'm going to give him one ace king, and you can see now he's got about forty percent. So he really needs to have Zio show up here with like aces or ace king some of the time, which I just don't think is really ever going to happen here, or have him show up with 5-6, which I don't think is really going to happen here, like 5-6 suited. So let's go back and even give Zio some more combo draws. Like I said, I gave him three before, and now I'm going to give him six. So A7 and diamonds, and, and these are all really, really big combo draws. 9-7 of diamonds, 5-7 of diamonds, queen-7 of diamonds, these are all the open-ended straight draw, you know, flush draw types of holdings. Jack seven of diamonds. And then let me find one other one. Let's say 10 seven of diamonds. So now he's got equal draws to equal value. And I remember what we talked about in my head. I said, you know, Garrett starts to approach, but he's still a little bit light. And he is, you can see he's 36%. So I just don't think that Garrett actually has the pot odds in this particular spot needing 38% equity to make the call. One other thing, too, that we can sort of look at is what's called minimum defense frequency. Zio is risking slightly over the size of the pot to win the pot, which basically means that Garrett needs the call to make a, you know, a bluff indifferent with, the, say, the top 50% of hands if Zio made a pot size bet. He actually moved in for slightly more than that. So it would be maybe 45% of hands. And it, it's really interesting because if Garrett has a lot of the seven eights here, it's questionable whether or not king six might fall into that range. But in this particular spot, um, there are some certain situations where I might look at MDF and weight it more than pot odds. I would surely look at equity pot odds in this spot. And I think where the deviation that I would make in the calculation is that Zio is going to be weighted more towards value hands here, less towards draws. And I do not think that he is jamming here with aces or ace king. This is the longest tank that I've seen Garrett take in a long time. I guess I'll fold. He's going to fold correctly. Unreal. You could see that he was definitely in the in the box for that one, but makes the correct lay down. You got to hand it to Garrett. I mean, he makes the right decision. Not only does he get maximum value from his big hands versus second best hands, but I've seen him make a lot of big lay downs and usually be correct. But I think I broke it down the math and taking a look at the equity against Zio's range. And I do think a fold is in order.